Yeah, that's an excellent question. The question was, for those who didn't hear it, was um, I'm summarizing, was basically those, those youth who are concerned and interested in studying, but at the same time want to strike a balance between uh, learning a skill or developing something by way in which they're able to, to work with and to make money, uh, what would be some general advice to them? Um, I would I would I would say to everyone bithilahi ta'ala to purify your intentions first and foremost purify your intentions and to seek after the knowledge of this religion sincerely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remove ignorance from yourself and then to remove ignorance from your kith and kin and from those who you are able to benefit bithilahi ta'ala Secondly, I would tell everyone to start with the end in mind. In other words, have a very clear idea of where you're trying to go before you set out on that journey. What do I mean by that? What I mean is, when it comes to knowledge, seeking knowledge, understand that the end, when it comes to seeking knowledge, is to implement that knowledge and to live in accordance to it. And this is seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you look at it from this standpoint, then one thing that strikes out at you is that you realize that this will end with your death. So this is a lifetime mission. So don't see it as I'm going to seek knowledge when I'm younger or I'm going to seek knowledge as long as I, that I'm overseas. And then when I come back to America, I'm not going to seek knowledge. No, seeking knowledge is all the time. Whether you're working 40-hour weeks, 80-hour weeks, whatever the case is, you still have to seek knowledge with Allah Ta'ala to the best, of your, the best of your ability. Of course, the one working 80 hours is not going to have as much time as the one working 40 or 20 or so on and so forth. Now, but the point is, is that seeking knowledge is a constant. Now, al-mahbara, al-maqbara. Now, the inkwell to the grave. Seeking knowledge is, is a constant. The other thing I would, I would say is that, and this is just some practical advice. When it comes to applying, if your route is to apply for the university for Medina, for example, they usually take some time before they accept you. You put your application in this year, you may not get accepted until the next year, and that's, that's at the earliest. Sometimes it might take two or three years before they accept you, right? Umukura, same thing. Three, four years before you get accepted, after you put your paperwork in. It takes some time. So when you understand this dynamic, there's nothing stopping you from continuing and learning a trade, right? You can always start to learn a trade because in that time between you placing your application between you actually accept it, you may be able to finish this course or that course to learn a trade. They have professional certificates that some of them take around six months or so that are reputable and they are respected. You can get a good job with it. So if it's going to take you a year or two before you actually get accepted and leave, then you have enough time to do a six-month course. So I would say don't use... This as an excuse not to do that and vice versa. Do them both with Nilahi Ta'ala. Put your paperwork in, study what you're able to study so that with Nilahi Ta'ala, when you do go to the next level, you're not starting from scratch. And this is one of the things that um, during my time, the Americans, we were at a disadvantage. We would go there, we were the weakest out of everyone. People came from other countries, be it Indonesia, be it countries in Africa, be it um, the brothers that came over from Bosnia, everybody was ahead of us. They were either, they already knew Arabic, some of them were already half of the Quran, so on and so forth. The best of us knew, knew some Tajweed, we knew some words here and there, we can read the Quran, but that was about it. That's what the best of us at that time. Man, maybe they, maybe they, you know, learned some, some Af'al and things like that. Those were like the guys, they were really you know, someone comes and they know the Ozana of Ali, they were rocket light years ahead of us. But that's the Americans. But compared to everybody else, they were in kindergarten still. So keep this in mind, Bithilahi Ta'ala. So learn and, and try to get as strong as you possibly can. 
before you go. Man. And what's the reality? Some of these schools, they have a age cutoff for attending physically. I'm talking about the Islamic schools like Medina, right? Um, Umm Qura, Muhammad Mas'ud, even Azhar has an age cutoff. When you reach a certain age, they won't accept you anymore for physical classes. Whereas, whatever you may study from the, in here, secularly, there is no age cutoff. You could be 80 and continue with a the class. They don't care, right? As long as you pay, they don't care. So my point is, is that there's no problem if you start something, right? And then stop. Go seek aim. Come back. Continue if you want. Or go to, or pivot to something else. But the point is that there's, there's nothing preventing you from continuing your education secularly after you come back uh, from Medina or Mukora or forever. So there, there's nothing holding you back. And one last thing I want to say is that Alhamdulillah, Medina University has opened up distance learning. So now this opens a door and it widens it. Even for those who are beyond the age limit, they can still attend because there is no age limit now anymore for distance learning. Not physical, but for distance learning. There's no age limit. And it's behind a paywall as well. So this now, if you got that skill, if you got that certification, if you got that degree, whatever the case is, now you'll have what? Disposable money you can afford to pay. And you can still attend. But here's the thing. It is only open for those who are fluent in Arabic. So this should bring now a whole different dynamic to the classes that, that you have here. Because you could become fluent in Arabic right here without ever leaving Orlando. It's possible. It has happened. It has happened a lot. Now, there was a brother back in the days... From North Jersey and he would go to the masjid in Patterson it was a predominantly out of masjid and he would freak the brothers out they said yo you heard about this American I said no nah, what about him they said man he just talks to us in Arabic we talk back to him in English his Egyptian brother telling me he said we talk back to him in English and he still talks to us in Arabic because he, he learned homegrown he never went anywhere and he learned Arabic man so this is an encouragement to learn Arabic because if you learn Arabic and become fluent it opens up doors for you so that if you now are beyond the age of 25, you can still study in, in, in the University of Medina and receive a bachelor's degree in Islamic studies. Naam. So don't wait. Be diligent now upon that which will benefit you in your hereafter and here in your dunya, inshallah.